Sicilia. These are desperate, serious times, and that's when the people of the church come together to receive that power, because there's darkness out there, and we need that power every day to fill us and give us a hope to encourage and strengthen others in their walk ways, in their ways. Heavenly Father, we just draw you today for this service of Pentecost, that something so wonderful happened 2,000 years ago when you entered a room of scared individuals. And you called them the disciples, you called them the apostles, and you called us the same. For we are disciples of Christ, we are your disciples. Help us with this message, and Heavenly Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. To your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Last week, Pastor talked about how the disciples got together in the book of Acts. And the outpouring of this special event caused them, to be, to everyone, to be filled with awe. Many signs and wonders were performed. They sold their properties to anyone who needed. And every day, they continued to meet in the, in the temple courts. They broke bread and they ate together in one accord. Praising God and enjoying the favor of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. That was last week. What I want to do is back up and find out how did all this began? How did all this start? Last week we saw the fruits of their labor. Now we're going to see what got them. We're going to see what can get us to that same point. I met Christ. I met Christ in a very dramatic way and began reading the New Testament, beginning with the Gospels and then the Book of Acts. I was excited. Man, I was excited about what I was reading. I was a new Christian. Wow, this was just, just brain food and soul food at the same time. But then when I went to church, I was disillusioned. The polite and tidy services were over right on time. I looked at some of the people around. And I asked them, when are you going to do the stuff? And they asked me, what stuff? And I said, you know the stuff. You see, I had been reading about the conversions, the healings, the deliverances, and other miracles that took place in the early church that was recorded in the book of Acts. And I know the pastor talked about some of these last Sunday, but instead of signs and wonders, I saw no sign of anything that made me wonder, except the deadness of the ritual that I had just sat through. I lost my interest in this church and was eventually led through the teachings of different churches, the teachings of different religions, the teachings of false beliefs, to the point that, confused as I was, I gave up religion. However, God's spiritual Pentecostal power had not given up on me. God's spiritual Pentecostal power was going to stir something up in me, and He wants to stir something up in you. Let us turn today to our scripture reading that Ms. Pamela will be so kind to read. And Pamela, where are we coming up? Where's our reading coming out of today? We're coming from Acts. The second chapter, verses 1 through 12. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, and they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, 
And at the sound of the crowd, at, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in a native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is that that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Christians and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yes, indeed, what does this mean? And what I want to do is kind of elaborate just a tiny bit on that. My message today is on stirring up God's spiritual power. And in order to stir something up, you have to have a container, right? You have to have something. You have to have a pot. And I know all kinds of ingredients go. And if you're to look at Sister Laura DeVos' Gumbo's Gumbo recipe, you would know. Uh, there's cutting, there's preparation, there's buying, there's stirring up, there's adding, someone taking a sip, no, it needs this. It's a lot of preparing to stir up God's spiritual power, but with God, all things are even so possible. First of all, spiritual power comes when you realize, and in your outline, the Christian life is not all, it's not all about keeping rules, but about knowing Christ. Until we renew our commitment to preaching that Jesus Christ is the way, it's the only way, the truth and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through Him, we will not experience the, the presence of the Holy Spirit living in your life, or know the zeal, the enthusiasm, the passion like that of the church, of the early church. Until the people who call themselves the people of God renew their commitment to knowing Christ on a daily basis, and living faithfully for Him, we will not experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Until we, until we live by repentance and faith, which means, repentance and faith, what does that mean? It's basically making a huge turn from your sin and trust in God. If we don't do this, we will always be going through the motions of religion without having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what I found myself into, I was looking for something. And when I was being introduced was religion after religion after religion, until I gave up on religion. But it wasn't until, until I was told, hey, and he tried the simplicity of Christ. And they told me that Christ is all we need. And I came to find out in my life, that's all we needed, that's all I wanted. It's like that song, Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places. That was me looking for Christ in all the wrong places, not knowing that He was here all the time. The Christian faith, we need to know what is faith. Well, faith is not a feeling. It's a reality. I can't go to Michael and say, and say, Michael, I feel like being your friend today. I can't go to my wife and say, well, Beatrice, like, today I feel like I'm married to you. <laughs> I know, my feelings the next day might be different, right? It is a relationship with a real person. Jesus Christ. Everybody say Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Christianity is about the most powerful and wonderful person in the universe who desires to know us intimately. This experience is not tame. It's, it is wild and powerful. Paul said, I want to know the Christ and the power of of his resurrection. He didn't say the power of his death, the power of his resurrection. Why? Because he is alive and he's in us. The second point that I would like to make is that the spiritual power comes when you realize that the Christian life is not just about salvation. Yes, it is about salvation. But again, it's not just about salvation. It's about transformation. It's sort of like this. I could take this 
I, this is a two gallon can, but if this was a 10 gallon can, I would take the top off of it. What would happen if I were to strike a match? Right? 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 It's sort of like this. You can take 10 gallons of gasoline and release a tremendous amount of energy by just dropping a lighted match into it. It makes a dramatic one-time impact, but there's another way to release the same energy. That, that's in the gasoline. Place it in the fuel tank of a new Honda, designed to take 30 miles to the gallon. The high-tech engine will use that 10 gallons of gasoline and it'll take you over 300 miles or more. Explosions may be spectacular, but the sustained control power, control burn has immense staying power. You don't want to be a flash in the pan. You don't want the Holy Spirit to just save you for heaven. You want Him to use His power to transform your life. You want Him to use you in this world for kingdom purposes, Amen. for His purposes, not just for your own. Yes. The kingdom is not far away. It's not far away in time or space. Look around. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is presence. The kingdom is working in your life right now. And to be a member of this kingdom, you need the power of the Holy Spirit operating in your life each and every day. Not just today. Maybe I'll use them tomorrow. Or maybe a week. No, no, it's every day. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle John, sorry, the Apostle John in the book of Revelation talks about the things we have to go through in this world. And yet he says, this calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commands and remain faithful to Jesus. The third point I'd like to make is that Pentecostal power comes when you overcome apathy and zeal. Does anybody know what apathy is? Can anybody give me a definition of what they think apathy is? So what is apathy? Let me put it a different way. Who can tell me what is the opposite of love? Hate. Hate. You. Hate. Let me tell you something. It can't be hatred. Let me tell you why. Because I could hate on Michael, I could hate on somebody, but still, I'm hating a person. I'm still engaging with them. I'm still having an emotional connection. I really think that apathy is this. It's when you become complacent. Which basically means when you don't care. You could care less for someone. When you don't care if someone is going to hell. When you don't even care if you're going to hell. I really think that's apathy. That's a picture of apathy. When you just give up. When you surrender and you just surrender to this world. And you just fall down. No hope. But let me show you a different way. The more you know God. The more you will love him. And the more excited you will be about his kingdom, the more you love him, the more you will want others to know him. The more you experience his presence and power in your life, the more of it you want. It's just a craving. We have a vacuum in our souls, and it's craving. It's reaching out for so many different things in this world. It'll reach out for drugs. It'll reach out for thievery. It'll reach out for anything and everything. But if your back and inside your heart reaches out to God, oh, what an amazing power it's going to be in your life. This is the way to live, right? Yes. We have, we have been forgiven. We have inherited eternal life. We have experienced eternal love. We are holding nothing back because we have discovered life. We have found a pearl of great price. And what will you sell to get this price, to get this pearl of great price? And isn't it worth more than anything else we have seen and possessed? Because of this, we are excited about life, and we are excited about the wonderful God we serve. We are willing to do whatever it takes to have more of Him. Many of you have heard about, there was about a guy by the name of Aaron Ralston. Now, Aaron Ralston was 27 years old. You may have remembered the story where he had his right arm pinned under a 800-pound boulder rock. And he achieved this. He got, he got himself this way through a climbing accident. 
This that this this that happened in a canyon near Utah's National Park. And the thing about it is he was an experienced hiker. He had already conquered a lot of the canyons out in Colorado, uh, 49 of them, and they were well over 14,000 feet each one. He thought about what it would be like to die on the mountain and have his family find his body, or perhaps never even know his fate. Ralston was a former engineer for Intel, and he was an avid outdoorsman. He knew what he was doing out there, and he thought about his options. After five days of being pinned down under this immense boulder and having run out of food and water, he decided to apply a tourniquet on his arm, reached into his pocket, pulled out whatever he had. In this case, he had a little pocket knife. And then he decided to amputate his arm below the elbow <coughs> with his pocket knife. He then rigged anchors and rappelled to the canyon floor with his one good arm. He walked downstream until he was spotted by Utah Public Safety Helicopter. What the news did not say much about this was this was that this Phi Beta Kappa graduate of Carnegie Mellon University credits his faith in God for the ability to do what he was about to do. And he, mur he, he mustered all that strength and courage to know that he would lose something valuable to him. And why, would, why did he feel it was valuable to him? He is, he is a deeply committed Christian who often played the piano in the United Methodist Church in Greenwood Village near Denver, Colorado. But the thing about Aaron is because he had that desire to live, that passion, that enthusiasm, that zeal, he was willing to cut away everything that was holding him back. And it is this kind of commitment that will enable us to experience spiritual power. When you are willing to cut away everything that is holding you back and walk out of the canyon of your own bondage, then the Holy Spirit will come to you in new and exciting ways. And you will start knowing a life that you could not know, that you could not dream, that you could not fathom was possible. The Bible says, therefore, since we surrounded by such a huge crowd of witness, to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily hinders our progress, and let us run the race that God has set before us. Just real quick in reviewing, the Christian life is not about keeping rules, but knowing Christ. The Christian life is not just about salvation, but of transformation. Spiritual power comes when you overcome apathy with zeal. How many of us, uh, raise your hand, how many of us can remember a name, a man by the name of Bob Marley? Bob Marley, his real name, I don't know if anybody knew, was Nesta Robert Marley. That a nickname, Bob Marley. Bob Marley was a committed Rastafarian who back in the 70s infused his reggae music with a profound sense of spirituality. Even the great guitarist of today, Carlos Santana, acknowledged Bob Marley as being a prophet, a modern-day prophet. Raise your hand if you remember a song that Bob Marley's song called, Steer It Up. Remember, you remember? Middle dog, steer it up. Well, today, we need to stir it up. Do you think that we could all do this? Oh, yeah. Everybody, put your hands in front of you like this, and stir it up. When you're feeling sad and blue and you don't know what to do, stir it up. <laughs> when you need a helping hand from the one with the master plan, stir it up. When you're feeling down and out and you don't know what life's about, stir it up. Yes, indeed. <laughs> this is about stirring up. Thank you, Michael. This is about stirring up God's amazing Pentecostal power in your life. We need to stir up God's power. Everybody say, I need power. I need power. One more time. Do you need it? Yes, I need power. power. Yes, we all need power. So what is this power? Sal, how can I get this power? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
continue with the handout and get ready to write this stuff down. Because right. This is so simple. Do it. Blow your mind. First, let's take a look at the word power. Let us break down each letter, starting with the P, the P in power. And the P in power basically says, basically states to frame. The P is frame. Out of the scripture, out of Psalms, it says, the Lord is near to all who call upon him. And what is all? What does all cover? All. all. Whether you're dying dead in the gutter, whether you're drunk, whether you're passed out, whether you're stealing, whether you're deep in dirt, whether you're out in the street, it is, it covers you, it all. And it's only to those who call upon him. So we had a song today, call him up. Mm -hmm. Yes. And again, we, we try to pretend that, oh, that person isn't calling upon, upon him, or he doesn't need to call on the Lord. Look at his condition. No, it's everybody. We don't have to judge anybody. We pray for them. The O in power is obey. We must, if we want to have this power, we must obey God rather than men. Who are you serving today? Who are you? Who's your leader in your life? Make sure that it is God and not man. There has been too many David Koresh's, too many um, Jim Jones that we go to as, as men and they think we have power. They think that, that we can get power from man. No, we go we get our power from God. We have to obey God. W, the, w, the W in power is worship. Come, let us bow down and worship Him. We can be, we can, we worship a lot of things in our life. We worship our phones, we worship electronics. We're going to come into an age where, man, it's, it's so much technology right now that's going on in the military that we don't even know about. The heart program, the chemical, uh, the releasing nano little things in the, in the air and the environment. And you know that uh, Monsanto, if you've ever read about Monsanto, they're doing a lot of genetic altering, modifying foods in our, in our, found in our stores. There's a lot that's going down, but when it comes down to it, who will you worship? The E is evangelize. Very plain and simple. If you want power in your life, don't keep it to yourself. Go and make disciples. If that's what our mission is, our mission statement, let's do it. Let's not just think about it. I know Nike says what? Just do, just do it. The R, the last one is read. Blessed is the one who reads. If you want, if you want power, you're blessed. You gotta be blessed. If you read the word of God, something's gonna happen. The book of Revelation, a lot of people think, man, it's a scary book, but what does it say? It says, blessed are they who read and understand this amazing revelation story. It's a love story. Believe it or not, in Revelation. When you put it all together, pray, obey, worship, evangelize, and read, you will have this abundant power. Are you getting this? When God sends forth His power upon you, amazing things happen. Barriers are broken. Communities are formed. Opposites are reconciled. Unity is established. Hope is established. Diseases are cured. Addictions are broken. Cities are renewed. Races are reconciled. Hope is established. People are blessed and church just happened. Today, right now, the power of God is present. And we are having some church up in here, up in here. So be ready. God is up to something. Discouraged folks, cheer up. Dishonest folks, fess up. Sour folks, sweeten up. Closed folk, open up. Gossipers, shut up. Dishonest folks, fess up. Gay bashers, stop bashing. Convicted folks, make up. Sleeping folks, wake up. Lukewarm folks, fire up. Dry bones, shake up. And cut the tails and cue the tails. Stand up. Right. <laughs> but most of all, make sure that Jesus Christ, the Savior of all, is being lifted up. Amen. Together, let's stir up this amazing Pentecostal kind of power. <laughs>
you get that? Yeah. Oh, God. I think sometimes because Sal's a little.